Um, I'm Dr. Julie Heimbach, transplant surgeon at Mayo Clinic, and I am uh, going to introduce a topic today, uh, which is a tumor of the bile duct called Hyler cholangiocarcinoma. We have developed a unique treatment strategy here at Mayo Clinic, um, which involves a team approach, and I'm going to introduce different members of uh, our team today to talk a little bit about uh, the aspects of the treatment protocol for this uh, cancer. We're going to start first with uh, Dr. Gregory Gores, who is Chairman of uh, Gastroenterology at Mayo Clinic and the uh, lead hepatologist who developed this protocol. Uh, I'm uh, Dr. Greg Gores, uh, Chairman of Gastroenterology and Hepatology at the Mayo Clinic. Um, I want to emphasize the teamwork that's involved in taking care of patients uh, with bile duct cancer leading to jaundice or hyaluronic carcinoma. The role of the gastroenterologist and hepatologist is to assess the degree of liver dysfunction, help with relief of the jaundice. Um, this can be accomplished through endoscopic procedures to place stents uh, and uh, aid in helping the patient uh, feel better from uh, correction of the dysfunction that occurs with bile ducts that are obstructed by the cancer. We also are involved in staging of the disease and helping the surgeons um, assess what kind of surgery is possible, what the appropriate therapeutic approach should be. Particularly, in, this is a hard uh, cancer to diagnose because it doesn't grow in a sphere or a ball. It's uh, a scarring cancer. It's hard to get to. And we've also pioneered a variety of approaches to look at the small samples of specimens from the bile ducts obtained during endoscopic procedures to help make the diagnosis of this cancer. In particular, we've developed molecular techniques to count the number of chromosomes on cells, which has proven particularly useful in distinguishing benign from malignant strictures. One of the special uh, situations which uh, the gastroenterologist and uh, general surgeons and transplant surgeons face as a patient with primary sclerosing cholangitis. Uh, these patients have a disease which causes stricturing of the bile ducts and are predisposed to cancer. The distinction between cancer and a benign stricture is very difficult in these patients and this is really uh, helped by a recent test looking at um, uh, abnormal chromosomes uh, in, the, in the cells obtained from the brushings. Patients with primary sclerosing cholangitis who do have cancer um, represent a very special subgroup of patients uh, with this disease. Um, the disease is off, the cancer is often multifocal. They often have advanced liver disease or scarring of the liver with cirrhosis. And these patients really are best served by a special consideration uh, for treatment with liver transplantation, which Dr. Judy Heinbach will discuss. The second member of our team uh, that we'll visit today is Dr. David Nagorny, who is a, a hepatobiliary surgeon here at the Mayo Clinic with a special expertise in treatment of bile duct cancer. Hi, my name is David Nagorny. I'm one of the uh, general surgeons who specializes in the treatment of uh, hepatobiliary tumors at the Mayo Clinic. Uh, my role in uh, uh, addressing these tu uh, tumors is to assess whether they uh, are resectable by standard techniques. Uh, currently, the major approach for addressing a tumor at the base of the liver involving the bile ducts is to resect the bile ducts, the gallbladder, and the portion of liver involved uh, by the tumor. Um, this uh, undertaking is a major undertaking, so uh, careful preoperative evaluation is required. Uh, before the patient uh, comes to operation, we exclude uh, distant disease um, that makes the tumor unresectable. And then because of the site of the tumor, we have to determine whether uh, the tumor can be removed. At the base of the liver, the bile ducts are adjacent to the major vessels that enter the liver. Um, if the tumor does not involve the major vessels, then potentially uh, the tumor can be removed. Um, once uh, uh, the patient has undergone careful staging with uh, imaging procedures such as MR, CT scan, uh, and endoscopy, then an operation is uh, undertaken um, to exclude disease in the lining of the peritoneal cavity. And if there's no disease in the lining of the peritoneal cavity, then uh, open operation for resection of this uh, tumor is uh, undertaken. Uh, oftentimes, uh, the tumor is not spread 
um, uh, distantly, but the extent of involvement in the bile ducts uh, within the livers on both sides uh, precludes a standard resection. And because of the extent of the bile duct uh, tumor within the liver, uh, our, we have developed a protocol for addressing uh, unresectable hyalurachalangeal carcinomas, which involves uh, uh, transplantation. And at that time, uh, if we can't resect the tumor, then we ask our transplant team to evaluate the patient for resection. I'm uh, Julie Heimbach. I'm a liver transplant surgeon at Mayo Clinic and the surgical director of the liver transplant program. And I'm going to talk about options for treatment of hyalurachalangeal carcinoma when the disease is unresectable. Um, Occasionally, it is uh, determined that the tumor is localized to the liver, but yet cannot be resected because it involves structures on both sides of the liver. In this case, um, liver transplantation could be considered. We initially thought liver transplant would be the ideal solution for bile duct cancer. Um, we tried liver transplant alone uh, many years ago, and we found that that was not effective because uh, the tumor simply recurred immediately after transplant. Subsequently, we've developed a very aggressive treatment program which combi combines preoperative treatment involving radiation therapy and chemotherapy aimed at basically destroying the tumor or making it so that it's unable to spread uh, after the time of transplantation. This protocol we began in 1993 and we have found that it has uh, given a significant benefit to patients. We have um, been able to offer transplantation only when the tumor is confined to the um, liver, uh, it is not an option if the tumor has spread outside of the liver. Um, but combining this very aggressive treatment with liver transplant has provided a treatment option for patients who previously had no treatment option. Um, the protocol is uh, arduous and patients need to be uh, carefully evaluated to make sure that they would uh, benefit from the protocol. Um, there are also many issues which need to be considered, um, one of which includes the critical shortage of uh, suitable donor organs for patients who need transplant. But all of these uh, are considered carefully. We have a large team of people that work together to treat patients with Harler uh, cholangio carcinoma, and this has allowed us to basically uh, offer something that uh, patients previously with unresectable tumors had uh, essentially no options for uh, a treatment that may provide uh, cure.